that I met uh, some years ago in Malta, in Malta, uh, in yes. France, in uh, about acoustics. Uh, we noticed that we had some uh, interest in, in, in common, and uh, well, you will see better his uh, medical doctor from the Department of Medical Sciences, and there's a triage in Italy. Uh, which is the other, I mean, there are also other, uh, yes, Natalia Tarabella, which unfortunately yes. could not come due to some problems, and Nina Rao, which is present, and other, uh, other <coughs> author from Finland. Yes, he's uh, the sound engineer mm -hmm. who analyzes uh, our, our records. Oh, if you want, so, I can start. So you, you okay. can start. Um, I want to speak about uh, this uh, particular sacred site uh, near Trieste, in Italy, northeast of Italy. But uh, I have to say something before. Uh, maybe boring, I hope not. Uh, because the acoustic now is uh, uh, a new methodology in the, uh, in the methodology of historical research. Um, now it's like a document. It's like a document for understanding better the uh, sacred sites, the ancient sacred sites. Um, because we know that uh, the musical instruments uh, were the highest level of knowledge of culture in ancient population, and uh, uh, probably for this reason for this uh, uh, um, close contact between people and music and sound, uh, they understood very uh, early the possibility to change the state of mind. We tested, for example, in Sardinia, this is uh, the sacred uh, well of Santa Cristina near Oristano, in Sardinia. Sardinia is a very good uh, place because uh, an island, uh, uh, it was not invaded a lot of time. The church, the Catholic Church, didn't destroy all these important and uh, uh, sacred pagan monuments. So we now we have the possibility to analyze uh, the characteristic of acoustic of these uh, sites from an acoustic uh, point of view. We tried uh, to reproduce the original situation inside the Nuraghi, the Nuraghi this big uh, uh, building of uh, Iron Age, and uh, also the, um, say, the incredible, incredible acoustic aspect we found in the Domus de Janus. Domus de Janus is not only one side but there are various sacred sites with a particular characteristic of acoustic, like in Malta. We found the same type of acoustic only in Malta. So, uh, now we are starting, we will go again in October for finishing our research, but uh, reproducing the uh, original situation with the various drums, we have uh, a strong effect on our consciousness. We, uh, uh, without taking uh, substances, strange substances, we uh, uh, charge ourselves with energy. So we can understand that, that the ancient population used a lot of this phenomena for uh, uh, changing the state of mind. Uh, so acoustic and I uh, met up excited from the Pioneer's time uh, because uh, uh, now it's very common. 20 or 30 years ago, when you speak about uh, uh, archaeology, a lot of my colleagues, uh, uh, academics, uh, say, oh, it's not silly, it's, it's silly, it's silly, it's silly theories. Now we accept it totally, the uh, archaeology. So, like acoustic. Paul de Vero was one of the pioneers in this field. So we have to be very grateful to him. This is, for example, a, a dolmen in Italy, not destroyed by the Catholic Church, 
Uh, why? Because in the, on, it's on the top of the mountain, so it was very difficult to find and to destroy. Uh, you know me from, uh, some people not all, uh, from uh, the first congress we had in Malta, uh, in which I presented myself and uh, the research uh, from medical point of view because I'm a medical doctor and, st and study neuroscience. Um, I presented at uh, that, uh, that time, but also after, uh, our research on the Cividale de Fiori Hippogeum. This is an ancient Hippogeum in northeast of Italy. We tried to reproduce the situation, the original situation with the drum, the rituals, uh, having uh, uh, um, an observation with the EEG electroencephalography. So we obtained very interesting results in this. First, uh, respect uh, the research of Jan Cook, we observed that uh, it was not only 110, the most important uh, uh, frequency for changing the state of mind, but everyone has uh, his uh, frequency, 90, 95, 100, <coughs> but it's, it's uh, obvious because we are different. I am tall, another person is low, uh, uh, red eye, uh, black eye, blue, light blue, high eyes. So we are different. So also our uh, uh, um, sensitivity is different. And uh, um, we observed that the sun, mm, some areas are not, uh, some people are not stimulated in the same way. Some people has uh, a stimulation of the frontal area and uh, have, uh, have uh, ideas, thoughts. Other people has a stimulation from a occipital area and have visions during this uh, uh, experience. But it's not for It's not for Why? Uh, yes, uh, it's important uh, the frequency has to be between 80 and 120 Hz. Outside, it's not possible. We have not the stim stimulation. Um, what I think the most important thing we discovered it. Uh, without saying it to the other researchers, I inserted five people in the group of volunteers, um, how can I say, with uh, a good uh, experience of meditation or prayer. And they had a totally different behavior in the EEG. So, for normal people, like us, for example, uh, with uh, this particular frequency, which I said a lot, uh, we can have uh, a good uh, relaxation at a particular frequency. Good relaxation. A person is relaxed, uh, is not uh, so nervous. Uh, if if uh, he was before nervous, after he is not. But uh, the most interesting thing is that uh, the people with the experience in meditation prayer had two or more reasons. Because normally we are sleeping, or we are awake, or we are concentrated. These people had two reasons minimum. So they were sleeping and awake contemporary. So, in this way, uh, they had visions, they had visions, by the sound. So, we can conclude that the, in this uh, aspect uh, that uh, these uh, ancient sites were not for, but for initiated people, for a, a little elite of people trained to this uh, uh, particular meditation or prayer, let's say. But, uh, this is the, uh, my uh, uh, side from medical doctor, but uh, you don't know, but I am also an historian. I hope to be graduated next year, if I have time for doing this. 
So this, this time I want to speak to you about uh, the historian point of view. This is another, another uh, second side we studied in Sardinia, a giant tomb, a giant tomb of Invertigo. Some important concept to understand, because uh, when I will speak about uh, the, uh, uh, the second side we studied, uh, this is very important for understanding our conclusion. First, there is no history if there is not a subject who is watching the fact. If uh, the facts, uh, um, if the facts uh, were not uh, watched by someone, they didn't exist. You understand? Because we have the history. Why? Because there is someone who saw, who described, who brought. So, uh, without the sources, there is no investigation. Because uh, the, uh, the job of the historian is to investigate on what we have. Oh, this is, for example, the William Smithy we studied in south of England, which is considered a tomb. A tomb with a particular uh, um, resonance inside. It's difficult for me to believe that it was only a tomb. Yes, it was, it was used as a tomb, but before it was a temple for these people. The investigation by the historian uh, is the, the subject who makes the history, because uh, the history is not it is. The people make the history, the historians make the history. So. When you change, uh, when you change uh, the methods for analyzing some remains, we can have uh, other conclusions. For example, we are also in Sardinia. What the reason of the ziggurat in the north Sardinia? It's incredible. We don't find any other ziggurat in, in the basin of Mediterranean except in Mesopotamia. Why? This is the question of the historian. What is the competence? How is the competence of the historian? We have four approaches to the history. We have to, to watch the document, the sign, we have to speech, we have to ask to the book, to the people, because it's very important that the, uh, um, the memory by words. We have to listen, we have to apply the logic. Why? Because if the words say something and we see totally another thing, we have to, to resonate on it. So, the historian competence is their ability to give real value to the science, value to the science. It's important to have good uh, devices in a acoustic, not, uh, 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 not uh, 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 Chinese microphones. It's important to have good uh, that. So, the conclusion, uh, history does not exist by itself. But it's a particular historiography that is told and interpreted, interpreted by the historian. Another example, we are in Bosnia, uh, uh, received from the memory of the population something about uh, this uh, nice, uh, uh, nice uh, house. This is my car. I, sp I spoke with this man who is the memory of the community, and I discovered that someone built over an ancient temple, probably a prehistoric temple, with megaliths of various tombs, his house. He used this big, big megaliths as a basement for his house. 
without speaking with a person like this, it was not possible to understand because uh, uh, they covered uh, the surface of the megaliths with the paint. Um, what is uh, the relationship between archaeology and historiography? Um, archaeology is, uh, uh, is uh, and uh, historiography has two different methodologies, but they have the same targets. Because the archaeology uh, studies the material remains, the remains of human activity, and also the activity of the environment. So the ecologic remains. For example, now the port of Rome, Ostia, is not on the sea. Something happened. So the historian has a, a more creative uh, 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 job. He has to investigate, interpretate the significance and the value of the object and documents they examine. So, this is, for example, another site we examined, the Mitreo Duino, 1st century Anno Domini. And uh, um, we, the question was, why they placed the Mitreus in that place? Because uh, with the archaeocoustic, uh, we recorded the movement of the river below this temple. And it was very interesting because uh, there was a lot of noise, uh, um, very low, having a, a strong effect on the uh, uh, consciousness. So the people present in those rituals were, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, surprised, amazed by this, uh, by this uh, continuous frequency below every ritual. So, uh, by new methodology, it's possible to reopen the place. Why? Because by the use of robots, uh, imaged by satellites, uh, photogra new photographic imaging, uh, archaeacoustic, archaeoastronomy, we can change the interpretation of some sacred sites. Because history is not a number of facts. Uh, if not so them, or no sign were left, it is like it never happened. So, it's important to distinguish uh, uh, history from historiography. It's okay. Because uh, uh, historiography is a great number of sources speaking about historical facts, and interpretation most part by sources. Okay, another example. What the... how... how... I have Sorry. Um, seven minutes. Seven minutes? Eight, eight, eight. Uh, yeah, I, I will do it very quickly. For example, we, we are again in Bosnia. Uh, I was called, because I am also a medical anthropologist, uh, for examining these human, uh, human remains. Because uh, uh, during uh, the ex Yugoslavia, was built this road uh, passing through this uh, sacred site. Sacred site, uh, and uh, uh, this remain with the uh, uh, C14, demonstrated that uh, in full uh, Ottoman Empire, the people uh, buried their they, uh, dead people um, <coughs> under the lapids, very ancient, not directed to the Mecca, but directed to the north. This is an important uh, uh, thing, because uh, the history of Bosnia, they say, when arrived the Muslims, they changed completely their customs. It's not true. But uh, this, <laughs> this was the problem with the, the uh, Bosnian archaeologist for this. Because in this moment, uh, uh, it's not a good uh, situation in Bosnia. OK. Uh, I want to conclude this uh, situation saying the document is a validated sign by the competent site of the investigator. If uh, you are not able to see the things, you cannot conclude anything. You cannot interpret it. Okay, uh, now we speak about Dolina Bocomili very quickly. 
It's a, a, a site uh, uh, near Basovica, Trieste, Trieste, on the northeast, uh, the extreme northeast of Italy. Uh, that is built in a depression of the soil, in a dolina. In a dolina. Dolina is a geological uh, term, say a sinkhole, because a, 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 a river, an underground river, who uh, melted the stones until they fall down. So, it was, uh, uh, yes, it presents a narrow, long, low passage and after a chamber with a dome. It's, uh, how can I say, uh, the island the monuments in, in lower scale, in lower scale, with uh, this uh, corridor, this passage, with the passage, and after the dome. So, this is the pressure. It's very large, it's very large. This, this projector, Compressed the image. Um, Bugomili, have a Why Dolina of Bugomili? In the memory, the name is Dolina Bugomili. Bugomili were a heresy, uh, a Gnostic heresy, heresy uh, very common in the uh, uh, Middle Age. So the Italian archaeologists considered that, that site as a medieval, a medieval site, because uh, the Bogumil uh, are, were present in the 10th century in Bulgaria, and after in Bosnia, and after in Italy, and after in France became Qatari. You know the Qatari, for sure. But uh, the characteristic of this, uh, uh, um, they didn't use uh, that Christian symbol. They say that the cross was a symbol of death. They considered uh, they didn't build churches, but uh, uh, they considered the bodies like churches. So they didn't need it. Um, they have a ritual purification, but it was a sect. So it is not very well known. Uh, low down, no knows better than me about uh, this. Uh, he, he wrote a lot about this. This is uh, the, how can I say, the spread of, 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 um, of the uh, Gnosticism from Palestine, from Syria, arrived Turkey, after Bulgaria, uh, Bosnia, and here, where there is uh, this uh, uh, monument. What is a dolina? I explained uh, just uh, now. It's the depression of the soil caused by the uh, uh, geological sinkhole, but closed. Um, there are a lot of men here all around because it's like an amphitheater. It's like an amphitheater. Um, there is no no documents about this. There is a, a, a memory. The uh, community of amendment and uh, some some uh, documents uh, speaking about it uh, in uh, 17th century, but we, we don't know anything. So he, it was attributed to the Bogumili, <coughs> but it's not possible. It's not impossible. Uh, another important thing so in, um, in the middle excavation in the bottom of the sinkhole. Uh, they found uh, uh, Roman plates. So probably it was present during uh, the Roman period. Uh, probably is, uh, I can say, uh, is before, was built before. Again, this is a scheme. Oh, this is a sinkhole with the amphitheater, and here there is a dolmen covered with the soil. The aspect is this. Aspect is this: uh, a, a little door, a long uh, passage, and a dome, a, a chamber with a dome. It's very similar to the technology used in Sardinia, in the, these uh, giant tom tombs. This one and this one, but there are uh, 
20, 30 tools like this. With the same technology we found near Trieste. You can see, for example, the passage of Sardinia over the Sardinian tomb, and you can see the passage of the Dolina of Bocumili. It's not so different. And uh, Sardinia is here. Trieste is here. So distant, so distant, and the same technology. You can see the entrance is all made by dry stone, but why it was not destroyed by the Catholic Church, which destroyed all the pagan symbol? Because it was very difficult to find. You see, during the summer, it's not possible to see it. This is a, the, there is the dolmen, dolmen in this place. You see the dolmen when there is all the trees in summer. So, uh, now, the uh, acoustic, very shortly. Uh, we placed a, a drum because in, the, um, in Sardinia the giant rooms have a strong resonance, similar to what we found in, uh, in Malta, for example. Uh, we, we tested the drum outside in the air and we tested the drum inside the chamber. And what we, we uh, found? This is outside with the records, recorders, and inside. But the microphone was on the other side of the, of the amphitheater for recording. See? It's not working. Good. Ah, yes, okay. This is uh, the aspect uh, with the bass sound and the, and the uh, um, harmonics of the, in the air. And you can see the different aspect when, when the uh, um, drum is inside the chamber. It's changed totally because uh, the, the, uh, this drum activates the resonance. We use this program that is a professional software used by in all the big uh, studio for sound and obtain this. When you are in the passage, you see just a little harmonics. When you are in the chamber, you activate immediately the resonance. You can see in this violet line. It was made by our sound engineer, Ricky Savolaire. This is a particular when we are outside of the chamber and when we are entering in the chamber. This is particular, the activation of, of um, resonance that is just in that range from 80 to 120 and it is at 91, 91 uh, hertz. This is the drum in the air. As it aspect of the resonance, this is not the drum, it's the chamber, activated by the drum, like a mother. Okay, I hope to... Outside. I enter inside the chamber. This is the resonance of the chamber. It's not only the, the, the drum. Okay, conclusions. First, we have uh, to backdate this uh, monument. It's not, mid it's not from Middle Age. It's probably from a protostoric period. Another important concept, uh, if we found uh, the same technology in Sardinia, in Malta, and uh, in Northeast Italy, the significance is uh, those people traveled a lot. And with uh, their travels, they carried with, the, with them the ideas and the technology. It's not possible if we found the same, the same uh, technology in the same period uh, in, two, in so distant uh, populations. Third, these people had a great knowledge of the relationship between sound and other state of mind because they placed the resonance 
in that chamber, in an empiric way, obviously, just in that range we found it in, in um, Malta and in the other uh, sites on the Mediterranean basin. I hope you are not bored by my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.